Welcome to season three of Falcon Focus. I'm your host, Vaughn Purdy, Vice President of Community Engagement with Simmons College of Kentucky. Welcome to this exciting new season. We are going to move forward with all things Simmons College of Kentucky. But first, this season one episode brings us uh, to a sad uh, memory. Over the summer, we lost one of our dear colleagues, Julian Sam, our band director and food services manager of Simmons College of Kentucky. It has been a tremendous loss, but our season one, ep season three episode is gonna do a tribute or be a tribute to Julian Sam. And to join me for this tribute is our beloved director, band director, Dr. Kevin Davenport, who's not only our band director, he's also the chair of our music department and our associate vice president at Simmons College of Kentucky. He has brought along with him a former student, a band member, Miss Rhea Finley, who graduated in the class of 2021, and she's now working in the music department at Simmons College of Kentucky as an assistant to Dr. Davenport. All of that was pretty long-winded, but I just want to say welcome and thank you for doing the show under these circumstances, but you all knew Julian extremely well, and I want you to just tell our audience what your first impression of, of Julian was when you first met him and how you came to know him and love him as much as we did. Well, first of all, good day. Um, I knew Julian for 17 years. I first met Julian in 2004. Mm -hmm. uh, he worked as my percussion coordinator with another band program. And we bonded the first day I ever met him. And through years we separated, did not talk for 10 years, mm -hmm. but um, situations brought us back together when he came to Simmons and had his dream of building a band program. And he sought me out right. um, to mentor him um, and how to develop and form the program and then eventually convinced me to come and help him uh, to start it. I'm curious about something, maybe Raya would be too. What kind of student was Julian? How was he? he? Seemed to be very energetic and all things HBCU. Can you tell us a little bit more? Well, when I met him, he was already, well, he wasn't a student. He was on the staff at Kentucky State. Okay. Uh, and. He was who we saw around here every day. He was that gung-ho kind of person. Uh, he loved the percussion section uh, at Kentucky State. He loved his fraternity. He was the same person that we saw him around here, the person he was in 2004. Okay. Okay. Well, sadly, again, we lost uh, a colleague who was all things HBCU. Uh, I'm also a graduate of an, H of an HBCU, Winston-Salem State University. Uh, and Julian and I, and you as well, had that uh, camaraderie about HBCUs. And Julian always said, you know what an HBCU is. You know what an HBCU is. And I was like, yeah, I know what an HBCU is. And he brought that sense of pride and sense of um, pouring into our students and nurturing students like Rhea. So Rhea, can you tell our audience what made you, what you thought of uh, Mr. Sam when you first met him and how he came to know you? So I met Mr. Sam back in 2016. Mm -hmm. I was uh, graduating high school and um, he knew my mother. They were uh, in band together at Kentucky State. Okay. Um, he was very friendly and passionate about student life and HBCU life. And I thought he was very friendly. Did, did you know about HBCUs before he came to tell you about them? Not much. Okay. So what was it he finally said to make you say, I'm gonna stay in town and go to Simmons? That is, that is so true. Again, we come from HBCUs, and when I first got here, I didn't know Simmons existed as well. I didn't either. So the fact that we are all here together, and he was here with us, was one thing that was really um, encouraging about coming to work, because you knew you had a colleague who knew exactly what we were all trying to do. Rhea, tell us what instrument you played and what was it like uh, to be in the band? I played the clarinet and it was um, very fun and interesting uh, starting out. Um, back in 2016, it wasn't that many of us. It was about three of us to start out with. Yeah, Rhea was one of the first instrument players in the band. Okay. One of the first. We called him the Foundational Phoenix. There were only three horn players when she joined the band. 
that took some guts to be <laughs> just three instrument players having to be out there playing with the drummers. Now, had you experienced the marching that's famous, so many HBCUs are famous for? I hadn't experienced HBCU style marching band at all. So how was that adjustment? Very big adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it fun? Did you get frustrated? And how did you get coached by uh, Mr. Saint? It wasn't really frustrating. It wasn't really frustrating because um, we were all doing something uh, for the first time. And then um, Dr. Davenport and Mr. Sam encouraged us that this is the foundation of um, what was to come. So. Okay, great, great, great. So tell us about the growth of the band thanks to you and Julian's efforts. Because so much was going on on campus. So many things that people did not uh, know about. And tell us about when we got the uniform which was huge for Julian and for you? Well, for, first of all, I think people need to understand that trying to build a marching band program with a student body that's so small, mm -hmm. it's just, it, 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 it's phenomenal. Uh, and most HBCUs, the band is only about 1% of the campus. Um, here, uh, before COVID, we had actually gotten to be 33% of the student body. Wow. Which is un pre-COVID we had gotten up to 60 band members mm -hmm. and that's just it's incredible mm -hmm. uh, to have so many students willing to take an opportunity to come somewhere that you know wasn't one of the traditional HBC mm -hmm. band programs mm -hmm. and what we always talked to them about was forming the legacy being the foundation of something that they could talk about for the rest of their lives right and we just kept back in front of them all the time we always talked to them about being the foundation and you know, they bought into it and we gradually grew, actually we grew pretty fast. Uh, we went from three uh, instrumentalists in 16 to, I think we got up to 27 wind players by 2018. Okay, and where are we now? Uh, now we've moved back down some because of COVID, mm -hmm. we're back to about 17 okay. uh, wind players, okay. strong players. Uh, but we're smaller, but you know, we're still well above the percentage that you normally see at, a, at an HBCU. That's true. Um, the uniform came along when I first got here. Uh, Julian had gotten a sample uniform, very generic sample uniform, and we began to sit down and talk about, you know, what should a HBCU uniform yep. really look like? Yeah. And um, I've been drawing uniforms since I was a teenager. Wonderful. So the uniform we have now, I actually sit down with a pencil and design. Wonderful, wonderful. We have to show our audience a photo uh, later on in the show. So, you know, every detail of the uniform, he and I sat down and talked about it and what we wanted it and how we wanted it to look. And, and but what people don't know is that uniform already has been admired all over this country. Mm -hmm. It's uh, beautiful. It's, it's a design that no one else has. It's very unique and it's very clean and very professional looking. Mm -hmm. And Julian, of course, you know, going from a drawing on a page to getting that sample uniform was an absolute thrill. And, uh, you know, it, it was something to see it go from, you know, just a thought, just a drawing, to getting the uniforms in and having them put together. It was just an exciting time, and, okay. and, and we spent a lot of time, and, you know, a lot of sweat in trying to get that done. Well, uh, Julian was all about HBCU culture, uh, and the band and the uniforms were a big um uh, accomplishment for him. He took it personally. Yes. He was so poured into the band and the culture. He would talk about the fraternities and the sororities and of course he would talk about food service and that was one of his second big passions. I think the band was first and food service was second. So when we come back we will talk more about uh, his other passion and that was food service. We'll talk about how Rhea you also worked with him alongside in the food service. So we're going to take a break, and when we get back, as we go to break, we're going to show you a picture of the uniform that Dr. Davenport is talking about, that Julian and Dr. Davenport poured so much into that made our band look professional, just like all the other HBCUs. We'll be right back in a few minutes. The music department at Simmons College now offers a gospel track for its music performance degree. 
Our Department of Music exists to develop musical knowledge and skill. Students become beneficiaries of program features and faculty that distinguish music as both an academic and artistic discipline. Program options include brass and woodwind instruments, as well as guitar, bass, strings, piano, percussion, and voice. Your gifts will be encouraged and developed by a staff of experienced performing musicians and by the warm support of your peers. You will have frequent opportunities to perform, including vocal ensemble, gospel choir, jazz ensemble, marching band, and other ensembles, both on and off campus. Your music program can go no higher than those who lead it. Now is your time to build a strong music ministry from within. Help support passion already in your community. Help develop gifts already in your congregation. You might have the next James Cleveland in your church and don't know it. The heritage of artistic dignity found at historic black colleges and universities. The tradition of black excellence in gospel music. The calling to use your gift to turn hearts. Your journey toward obtaining a bachelor's degree in music starts now. Simmons College of Kentucky. Apply today. Become a part of the legacy. Welcome back to Falcon Focus. Uh, as we were been discussing, we were talking about the legacy of our beloved colleague, Julian Sam, who unexpectedly passed away this past summer and left such a large legacy in our band program. So we're continuing to talk about uh, what's next for the band program. And with me again is Dr. Kevin Davenport, band director and chairperson of the music department at Simmons College of Kentucky, along with Rhea Finley, who is a former student, class of 2021, and now working alongside Dr. Davenport in the music department. So welcome back, and let's talk about the legacy um, of the band department, uh, the influence that Julian had on it. So what's next? Well, one thing we wanna do is continue to honor him. Uh, what we're doing on a daily basis is really building on that dream that he had. Uh, so we need to continue to work towards building the program that he wanted to see develop. Uh, we've built into our daily rehearsal um, a one minute moment of silence just to honor him on a daily basis. At the end of our rehearsals, we end every rehearsal with that one minute moment of silence. Uh, we feel his spirit still in that room uh, every day that we do. Um, you know, we are coming out of well, trying to put a band back together after COVID, of course, and still dealing with COVID protocols and those kind of things. So it, it's a rebuilding almost of the band program. Uh, and so we're refocusing on our direction, reestablishing what we intend to do going forward. Uh, the main change is to now try to get the band in front of other HBCU bands. Mm -hmm. We spent most of our years before now putting them before high school bands, trying to you know let people know that we were here, mm -hmm. that we exist. But I, it's just really important that we now get in front of some other college bands and have our students to have that experience of comparing their musicianship and their talent to mm -hmm. other people on the same level. 
that was something Julian really, really uh, focused upon. Mm -hmm getting the students in front of at the HBCU showcases? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, trying to get them out to see the mm -hmm. bands. It, it was his first focus. I mean, no, the first year, he first couple of years, he took them down to the Honda Battle of the Bands to that. see the other HBCU bands. Mm -hmm. And like I said, now we're at that point where we are building uh, sisterhoods with other, particularly other private HBCU bands that are, are really in the same spot we are. They're small, they're trying to build um, actually, our program is being the pattern for several others. Um, I got a call recently from the band director at Fisk University. Mm -hmm. They just started their band program in the last year. So Fisk did not have a band? They did not have a marching band. Interesting. Uh, but the band director called, he said, I had to reach out to you because when I was hired, uh, the president called me in and showed us a video of Simmons College and uh -huh. said, you need to pattern yourself out after that. Listen to that, Ray. That is such a tribute. So, that is so amazing. So what we've done here, uh, what Julian did here, was build a pattern now for other HBCUs that are starting band programs. Mm -hmm. And so it's respected all over the country what we've done. I know Julian would be proud. He continued to pour into the band, mm -hmm. and that was his uh, baby, so to speak, the band. And he'll always be there. He'll always be a part of this program. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't separate uh, the program from what he put into it because he poured so much mm -hmm. into it. So, Ray, what do you think your contribution has been so far when you switched from being a student to now working alongside band students in the music department? I think um, my contribution is more helping the students get ready and prepared for uh, rehearsals okay. and have all the supplies that they need. Okay. Do you like it, the transition? Yes, I like it a lot. It's, it's a lot different, but it's a different um, role that I can um, <laughs> put myself into to help the band. Okay. So what are your plans for the band and the music department going forward? Well, right now it's um, it's day to day because we, with this COVID thing still out there, just trying to figure out what we can and cannot do. Because you all used to go out in the community mm -hmm. and do and the parades, parades and, and that kind of high school stop right now. A lot of that has. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I'm doing right now is talking to, like I said, several other uh, college bands uh, and trying to set up one-on-one -on -one exchanges um, so that our students can have that exposure and these other bands can too. Because we now change from being the one that's being built to really becoming the educators of how to build. That's right, that's right. And that's what I'm trying to keep our, get our students to understand is, okay, now we set the path. Mm -hmm and we need, need to let other people see what we're doing. And speaking of what we're doing, do you want to tell them a little bit about the new building that we have for music? Yes. Because that's a tremendous accomplishment for us. And, and that, that's an amazing thing where Simmons College thought so much of the band and the music department that uh, as they renovated Axton Hall, mm -hmm. decided the resources that we're putting there would be best spent mm -hmm. um, on giving the band and the music department a place to be home mm -hmm. uh, for us to kind of spread our wings mm -hmm. and uh, have the facility that we needed to grow. And it's been, it's been a tremendous blessing to it, have it, that kind of space. And it's I have to give uh, honor to uh, Barney Barnett, mm -hmm. our former trustee and board president, yeah. who poured money into that building. He saw the vision in that building and wanted to pour uh, millions into that yes. one building which transformed the campus from its historic site to what it looks like now yes. and uh, we owe him a debt of gratitude and his family uh, although he has passed uh, he left a legacy there as well and Julian was uh, very happy to be in that space and see what it was before Absolutely. to come into that and uh, he had offices in there just like you all and he was very proud of that accomplishment, but Julian was the type, it didn't matter what building he was in, whether he was at a &L, whether he was at uh, Stewart mm -hmm. or Parrish, he just carried that spirit of positivity, of HBCU-ness, mm -hmm. because he understood where exactly we were trying to go, but he uh, relished in being a part of that new building on the Barnett campus and being a part of the groundbreaking. Absolutely. So it was a great accomplishment. And I think we, um, the band, tell us about the band that day when we uh, 
Well, that was a Trade, uh, open that building. Right. So we used part of the percussion section and, and had other band members that were in the uniforms for the first time ever. That was the first time they ever wore those uniforms. So to be at the new building in the new uniforms and, and he and I as band directors having our band director uniforms on yeah. for the first time, it was just, that, that day was really an exciting day. It, yep. it was that next step. Mm -hmm. It was. It, it's big for the, anytime you can see growth mm -hmm. of a, a college as old as Simmons, 1879, and then to see those historic buildings renovated and transformed. So, Raya, did you march that day? Did you participate in the opening of the building, or were you there? I was there. I was helping um, giving the tours to the people who were there to see the campus. Oh, great, great, great. And what do you think the students thought about or think about that? They were really excited, especially the people who had been there since uh, the beginning. They had yeah. never seen uh, mm -hmm. that building before. That's good. That is wonderful. It's been wonderful for Simmons, wonderful for our community, and wonderful for the, wonderful for the growth of the band program. But we have something before we, before we leave and before we um, forget about the importance of Julian and the history, I want you to tell us about um, a new proposal that we talked about um, to honor Julian's legacy because tell us about what you do anyway when you recruit students. You well, bring them in. Well we bring them in, um, in in the HBCU world in general one of the draws is scholarships. Mm -hmm. I mean it's a very competitive market for band members, instrument players now. So our, our, most of our students that come in to be in a band come in on scholarship. Mm -hmm. Um, and with that kind of hope, with that kind of financial support, at least gives them a, a, a good head start on you know, having the, the resources that they need uh, in order to go through college. And, and there are some, you know, some requirements set on that that we hold to. And, but it's, it's rewarding to know that someone cares enough about what you do to be willing to financially support you in that. And you've been able to travel across and get students with the scholarship program. We, we've managed to recruit students now from nine different states mm -hmm. uh, to come here to be a part of the band program. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, the proposal that you and I talked about and we're going to continue to talk about is having one particular scholarship that really speaks to Julian and his legacy and to really support one particular student that embodies everything having to do with Simmons and the HBCU, HBCU. And, and the band experience particularly. Mm -hmm. So I believe you have an announcement. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're going to put we're, together. We're going to put together a Julian Sam Memorial Band Scholarship. Uh, hopefully it will be cover all tuition mm -hmm. for one student in the band that displays that spirit of what Julian was all about. Yeah. And, you know, we're hoping to get that in place as soon as possible. We will get that in place. What a wonderful way to honor Julian because he works so hard, so hard. Ray, can you give us, close us out with telling us about how uh, he impacted your life and still continues to do so and how you will remember him? I would say he impacted my life um, with the HBCU uh, spirit and just the excitement of uh, doing something um, new with a, a HBCU that had just recently started and just continuing to do, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> continuing to do um, band and continue my uh, education. That's right, because he, he poured into all of his students as well. Dr. Davenport, how you remember Julie? Well, he's my brother, first of all. He always was and always will be. and. Uh, he brought me back into my passion too. Um, I had stepped out of the band world uh, before I came here. So it was because of him that I got drawn back into doing this and renewed my passion for band. And you know, he'll, he'll always be a part of me. Okay. Um, one great thing between he and I, we never left each other without saying I love you. That was that brotherhood that we had between each other. So the last words I ever said to him were I love you. Wonderful. That is so wonderful. Well, thank you for joining me in our tribute to Julian Sam. He will always be remembered here at Simmons, but this um, tribute will continue. Uh, we'll mo move on to our next episode, which will be part two, to continue talking about the legacy of Julian Sam. Thank you for joining us on this edition 
of Falcon Focus.